All right, I believe we are live. I'm gonna get my windows together as usual. So give me just a second here. And as you guys are joining, hope everyone is having a fantastic evening. Hope you guys had a great weekend. All right, I'm excited to give you guys just a little preview and walkthrough on this course. Right, opening up my live chat here. I think I actually have all of my windows in line this time. It's a miracle. All right, Matthew, what's up, man? So we have Matthew in the live chat. All right, I'll hang out here for just a second and keep organizing my Photoshop documents that I'm about to show you guys here. And uh, as, as you guys are joining, let me know where you guys are watching from. It's always fun to see that. Uh, here where I am, let's see, it is uh, 10 p.m. at night, so Justin Hobgood, what's up, man? Um, Justin, I'll be doing your uh, the critique on your photo tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be my uh, my Instagram photo critique, so, um, and I st I'm still trying to decide which one to pick. Uh, I really like the gorilla one, so I don't know if I'm going to pick that one because that one is just really, really good. So I don't know if I could really critique that at all. But I will be critiquing one of your photos tomorrow. Uh, Paul says, uh, great morning in Sydney, sun shining, beautiful day. In Sydney, wow, that's awesome. Well, I guess I should say good day to you, Paul. I have a couple friends that live in uh, Sydney, and they always, every time I talk to them, they always say, good day, Eric, good day. I love the Australian accent. It's just awesome. Take a sip of water here if you don't mind. Uh, Justin says, "Sweet, looking forward to it." Yeah, awesome. Me too. I always, I love doing the critiques, so I always look forward to the uh, photo critiques as well. All right, I'm gonna hang on here just another minute, uh, just because I didn't schedule this stream, so I hate it. I, it always happens to be that I always start my streams a little too early, and then as people, uh, <laughs> Paul says, "Good day, Eric. Good day, Paul." Um, and uh, yeah, as I start the stream and then like 10 minutes into the stream, I have a lot more people watching and everyone's like, did I miss something? So we'll just hang out here and chat for a minute. So if you guys have any questions or any cool things you want to share, stories or photos or whatever, just uh, put those in the live chat and we'll hang out here for just a few minutes and let some more people join. And then I'll take you guys through a, uh, a quick sneak peek, if you will, of some of the, uh, a couple of the lessons the Photoshop documents here that we're going to be using in this photography processing course. So, uh, the processing, the landscape photography processing and HDR blending course that I'm making here, uh, it's all done filming. Um, the video editing is almost all done. Um, right now I'm waiting for a lot of lessons to just export. Um, it takes roughly six to eight hours per lesson to let it export. And there's going to be eight lessons. Um, so there's going to be eight full lessons. And then the cool thing is once you buy it, I'm going to release bonus lessons. There's going to be two bonus lessons that I'm going to throw in for free after you buy it. So no additional cost. Uh, they'll be thrown in, you know, one of them might be thrown in a couple weeks after you buy it. One of them might be thrown in a couple months after you buy it, but it'll just be kind of a surprise in your, in your email inbox one day. Cause the reason I wanted to do it that way is because I wanted to like, I didn't want to overwhelm all of you. Within these eight lessons, there's a lot of information, and I, I went slow and step by step, but as we get further into the uh, tutorial, um, you'll see that you're going to learn all you need to learn, and then I'll just throw in some uh, some little surprise lessons here and there so you can kind of you know keep yourself in check as well. All right, let's see. Uh, Chuck says, thanks for answering my camera choice questions the other day. Yep, no problem. It's my pleasure. Uh, Justin says, any idea what time tomorrow? Uh, yeah, it's going to be late. Um, it's probably going to be, uh, my time, which is Eastern time. It'll probably be around nine or 10 PM. So your time, I guess that's what three hours earlier where you are. Uh, and then Justin says it's about time. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh my gosh. All right. So this landscape photography processing tutorial has taken a lot longer than I thought, uh, because it, uh, imagine taking, so like I've been doing photography and the kind of post-processing that I've been doing for like 10 plus years. And imagine taking all of that that's, that's been in my head for 10 plus years and trying to fit it into a manageable amount of time to teach in a tutorial. Basically I'm trying to fit it into like 45 minute to hour long lessons. 
And I think the last one's going to be like an hour and a half. It's going to be a long lesson. But I, trying to do that and then have it make sense is so hard. I, did, I thought it was going to be easy. I was like, yeah, I, I know all this stuff. But when you try to convey it and try to teach it in a simple way to people, man, it's tough. So, uh, okay. Well, it looks like we have... Uh, oh, and by the way, just a, a heads up. If I say anything weird or strange, it's because uh, I have not slept in about 28 hours. So... Uh, I've been editing video for this tutorial so I can get this stuff out to you guys. So literally have not closed my eyes in 28 hours. Uh, feeling good though. Feeling good and productive. All right. So, uh, yeah, so this HDR Masterclass um, should be out very, very soon. I've said it a million times, but it's going to be out extremely soon. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the... Uh, Photoshop window here so I can show you guys just one of the uh, PSDs and then I'll check back with the live chat as well. So, okay, so here is one of the Photoshop documents. Now, I have a group here called HDR Blend, then I have a group here called Post Processing, and you'll see why I do all of this if you purchase the tutorial. So, in the blend, this is what we start out with this is our straight out of the camera middle exposure, okay? And the first thing I did was, through a series of tools, I created a group with a luminosity mask to recover my highlights. So if I turn that on, there's my beautiful highlights recovered. If we zoom in there, I'll zoom in a couple. By the way, this is lesson seven. So this will be lesson seven in the course. This is going to be one of the more advanced ones. Okay, so you can see we recover all the highlights there with just a luminosity mask. It's beautiful. Okay, so then... We created another group with another luminosity mask that we actually edited and restricted, and then we lifted the shadows. So there is our shadow recovery with that luminosity mask. You can see the before and after there. Okay, now let's open up our post-processing folder. So the first thing we did was I added some contrast using a plugin that I like to use. And then the next layer, I added a little more tonal contrast to affect the color. So you see that's before and after, before and after. And then I added some vibrance, or I'm sorry, I actually added a vibrance layer. I desaturated this path here, okay? And then I actually broke up one of the color channels by itself to do some more work on this little path. So let me do before and after. And you can see the little road here get brighter just to help with the leading line. And then we went here, and we just gave the whole, the, the exposure and the shadows a little lift there. Same with the color, just a little lift. So that's before and after. And then I did some warmth and contrast in another plugin. So there's that. You can see how it just got contrastier and all the wheat got really warm and nice. That's before and after and before and after. Very subtle change, but very powerful. Then I went into On One Photo Raw as a plugin and added a couple filters in there. You can see what big of a difference that made. That's just a big change, beautiful change. And then I added a dodge and burn layer and did some pressure sensitivity, selective dodging and burning. Okay, and by the way, don't get scared at this point. That's before and after. Uh, all of this I go through step by step. Then I added a sharpening layer. And we can zoom in and see this, by the way. I want you to see. It's probably going to be hard for you to see on the live stream. But if we zoom down here into the rocks, I want you to see the sharpening. So this is with no sharpening. Okay, that's sharpening off. And then that is sharpening on. It's amazing the difference. I use a specific sharpening tool and a specific recipe inside of that sharpening tool that really brings everything to life. And then I used a noise reduction layer. And you can see that back here in the clouds. Because when we did a bunch of detail changes and contrast and color, you add a lot of noise into the clouds. So let me turn the noise reduction off. And you can see all this gross noise popping up here. And then we turn the noise reduction on. And it just all softens up. So that is that photo, completely gone through with layers, and that takes about 45 minutes or an hour for me to teach, but if you were actually editing this, it wouldn't take any more than about an hour. So again, this is what we started with, out of the camera, middle exposure, and that is our end result. One of my favorite photos, in my opinion. Um, okay, let's check the live chat before we go on to the next one here. All right, let's see what's going on over there. All right, let's see. Uh, sounds easy. Yeah, yeah, the tutorial is super easy. 
Uh, Melinda says that pic is in my living room. By the way, everyone, that is my mom. I can't believe she figured out how to actually watch one of my live chats. Congratulations, mom. You've like, you've graduated from like level one to level three in the technology game. Um, okay. So anyone have any questions about, uh, if I'm going to be covering anything specific in this tutorial, um, is there like a specific something you guys want to learn? Because there's a there's eight lessons, and each lesson is just packed with stuff. I talk about uh, the specific way to get color and contrast and white balance. Uh, so Chuck says I'm not really proficient in Photoshop, and you don't have to be. You don't have to be. That's what's great about this tutorial is I just show you the things in Photoshop that you need to know for landscape photography processing, and you can learn as much or as little as you want. So. The, the best thing about this specific landscape tutorial is that I kind of start in the beginner realm, you, you, I guess you could say. It depends on, it depends on if, you've, if you're like one day into photography or if you've at least been doing it for a little while. You don't have to be an expert to do this course, but um, basically I start with lesson one, two, and three are uh, kind of introducing you into the game of blending and how to get your color and contrast correct. And then pretty much from lesson four through eight is uh, it's just kind of really hitting hard on luminosity masks and how to break up the light channels or the RGB channels to enhance your light and, and actually mask off for sharpening and tons of different stuff. I'm not going to go into it because I don't want to scare you. I promise. I promise I make it super easy. I go step by step. And the best part about this as well, I know there's a lot of best parts, I guess, because I've said that three times now. But uh, another really good thing about this tutorial is that when you buy it, you get instant free access to a support group on Facebook uh, where you can ask me any question about the tutorial. If you thought that I left something out or if you don't really understand something and you get me personal, uh, a personal response from me, uh, and I tell you how to sort it out or, or help help you solve it. Or if need be, I will get on a Google Hangouts with you and we'll do a live video chat so I can help you uh, help you solve the issue. So uh, I am backing this tutorial up with some serious support so that way I'm not just selling this to you guys and then leaving you high and dry and moving on to the next one. I really want you to learn this stuff. Um, Chuck says, I have some, some experience, but what you've just shown looks over my head. Uh, a lot of people think that. I thought that too when I learned this stuff, but it's so you get so much better and so much cleaner results out of your images, especially if you print. If you print, the stuff that I teach is is vital to make sure you get optimum quality and you get rid of the noise where it needs to be, you sharpen the areas that need to be sharpened, and I, I promise I, I make it so easy to understand and specifically the support issue is, is what I wanna stress, that if you guys have any questions, over there on the Facebook group that I'm going to create for the support group. Um, literally, any, any question you want about the tutorial, anything that you think I left out, whatever, I will make sure that I will answer that for you. Uh, Charles says, so is this a how I process tutorial or does it also go into explaining uh, why you do what you do? Yes, this it, it's both. So it teaches you how I do the things, but it also teaches you why I do them, why I make the color changes I make. So basically, the tutorial is me here at my computer capturing the screen, and then I have a camera off to my right. And I constantly do something here. I'll make a post-process change, and then I'll look at the camera, and I'll kind of explain why I'm doing it. So that way, you have that companion ex explanation that tells you why we're making the changes we make. And I also tell you that on certain things that I do, there's there's a million different ways you can do these things, but I specifically tell you why it's more efficient to do it the way that I do it, uh, so that it's more efficient and faster. So, but again, if there's anything you think that I left out, because e each person understands things differently, and especially interprets them differently from a visual perspective. So yet again, if there's anything that you think I left out or anything that you don't understand, that's what the, the Facebook support group is gonna be for. Uh, you can always go in there and ask me a question as long as it pertains to the tutorial. Um, and we'll be good. So as long as you're not going in the support group and asking me about which Fuji camera to get or whatever, we'll be good. If, as long as it's about the tutorial, I'll answer anything you want. Um, Justin says, need a Wacom? Uh, nope, you don't have to have a Wacom tablet. Everything that I do in here, you can do with a computer mouse. Uh, but it is it is nice to have a Wacom tablet. I would recommend one because a lot of the stuff I do uh, is better and nicer with the pressure sensitivity. So as you press harder, it will apply more of the effect. And as you you know have a softer brush, it does not apply quite as much of the effect that I'm doing on, on screen. So... Um, it's up to you, but you don't have to have a Wacom tablet to do this. 
Uh, Chuck says, sounds like something I can definitely buy into then. Uh, yeah, definitely. And, and again, Chuck, if, if, you, if you buy it and you say, you know, I, I don't understand lesson three through five or five through eight, go to that support group. And if I have to do a one-on-one video call with you and do just give, give you some specific more attention to make sure that, that you are happy with the purchase, I will do that. So no worries at all. There's no risk. Um, all right, here we go. Let's... Let's jump on to the other PSD real quick. So this is going to be the last lesson that I'm doing. Now, the reason why I want to show you the last is because I want to show you um, how much you can do to a photo and how complicated you can get, but also how subtle of a result it will make to the end result. Because a lot of people think that if you do like 50 steps in Photoshop, your photo is going to look insane. But you can do a lot of steps and still make them just very subtle changes. I kind of like build a pyramid of layers off of very subtle changes so that all the tiny little subtle changes build up to this big, beautiful end result. So let's go ahead and get back to the Photoshop window here. All right, and we'll go on to this photo. So this photo is the middle exposure here, all right? And this is the one right out of the camera. And this time in the blend folder here, in Photoshop, we have three luminosity mask groups. We have one for the shadows, one for the highlights, and then one for more highlights. And the reason why I did that is because I actually made a different luminosity mask which targeted more specific highlights. Again, don't pay too much attention to what I'm saying because uh, you know about the techie stuff because this is lesson eight. This is the very last lesson we're going to work on. So this one, I, I go very slow, step by step, and explain everything. So. Here is the shadows recovered. You can see under the pier here, they just recover really nicely, okay, off and on. Here's the highlights. There's that beautiful sky coming back there and the highlights on the water. And then here's the folder that says more highlights. So I did just, you can see in the sky, just a hint more of highlight recovery with a third luminosity mask. And the reason I did it was to get that sun to be perfectly pink. I wanted all the detail in that sun back there. Let me zoom in so I can show you. Uh, Photoshop's going to freeze up on me here. I'm doing a live stream in Photoshop and exporting video in the background. So my computer is really working here. <laughs> okay, so here's the sun without the more highlights layer. And if I turn the more highlights on, you can see that sun just gets a little pinker. And everything gets a little more color in the back. So that's what I did there. And then we'll, so now we'll close the blend. So the blend is done. And then we'll open up the post-processing folder. You can see there's quite a few things in here. So this is some contrast, okay? Already made a big difference there with contrast. This is some more contrast, doing some tonal contrast and adding some texture. So if you do that off and on, off and on, look how it really makes a difference to the texture and the water and the clouds. And then here is a plugin inside of On One that we used. And then here is a sunlight warmth layer. So I really worked on the warm tones and worked on the direction and the color tones of the light. And then here's a details layer right here. So there's detail kind of being brushed into the pier here. And then here is a shadow lift. So just a little lift in the shadows in the pier again. And then dodge and burn. So you can see I dodged the white caps of the waves. If I turn that off and on, off, and on and then here is contrast just for the pier okay and then here is a luminosity mask folder that's for sharpening and a luminosity mask folder that's for noise reduction now why in the world did I use luminosity masks for sharpening and noise reduction well let me show you I only want to sharpen the pier right but I want to do noise reduction on the sky well how in the world do I separate the pier from the sky without drawing a shape around the pier and taking forever to, to do a manual mask. Well, what I did was, I'll show you the luminosity mask. So here's the mask for the sharpening. I made sure the way that I restricted this mask was that the white was affecting the pier. So the pier is selected and the, the black sky is hidden. So the be that means the sharpening is only being applied to what is white, which is the pier and some of the waves here which I masked out the waves, by the way. If you open this group up, you can see I did a gradient mask on the waves. And then here's the luminosity mask for the sky. So it's just opposite. Now the sky is affected and the, and the pier is hidden. So I did noise reduction in the sky and did not, sh and did not do noise reduction on the pier because I did sharpening on the pier. So again, this might sound like a lot of work, but that is the end result. 
And this is the last lesson, so keep that in mind. This is after everything we've learned, and I go through this step by step. So this is the middle exposure right out of the camera, and that is what we end up with. Absolutely beautiful result. Noiseless in the sky, super sharp in the foreground, nicely dodge and burn with some leading lines with that wave, and I think it's just an absolutely great result. Love that photo. All right, let's check the live chat again here. Let's see here. Uh, Xbox Flooring says, make a DVD. Um, I don't think I'm going to make a DVD because that just costs too much money to produce and then ship out. I might end up making them on thumb drives, but it's just so much easier these days to offer digital downloads and then you can stream them or download them on your computer. It's just easier that way for everybody because it, it costs it costs people like me less money for manufacturing because I just get to make a digital file and it's less it's just it's less stress on people now that try to buy laptops and tablets and stuff that don't have DVD slots, right? Because most of the laptops now don't have DVD slots. People have things like the the Microsoft Surface Pro or they'll have like a MacBook Pro like this and neither one of these things have DVD drives. So um, I don't think I'm going to make a DVD, but um, if you do the digital download, you can make a DVD out of it. Uh, Justin says color selection. Um, never mind. Uh, okay, I'm not. If you, if you have a, if you if you want to elaborate on that, I'm sorry. I don't understand what you're saying there. But um, uh, Chuck says I don't think I even own a DVD player anymore. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I know. I know there's people that do, but yeah, I don't. I don't own a DVD player, and I don't have. I don't own a device that has a DVD player in it, like a, a CD-ROM drive. I don't have. They don't even make laptops like that anymore. I don't think. Um, but that that's the main reason why I don't. I would. You know, I, I would normally if, if I thought that it was going to reach a large market of people, but it just it would just cost too much and take too much time to get, you know, to manufacture so many because I expect I'm going to sell, uh, you know, a thousand to two thousand copies of this thing. And uh, by the way, if you're still watching the live stream right now, um, here's a little secret for you. So when I sell the 1,000th copy, okay, so on the 1,000th copy of this tutorial, I'm going to take number 1000 the person that bought it and then everyone before that and you will be automatically entered into a raffle to win a free fujifilm xt2 nobody's sponsoring it i'm buying it myself and i'm giving it away why am i doing that because if i sell a thousand copies that's going to be about eighty thousand ninety thousand dollars worth of this software so if if i make when i make eighty or ninety thousand dollars on this software I'm just going to give you guys a big thank you and a big high five by giving away a free Fujifilm X-T2. And I might even do the whole kit, the 18 to 55 kit lens and everything. Uh, and if I'm feeling good, I might throw in the battery grip too. But that's just a, a fun fact there. So on my thousandth copy, I'm taking the thousandth person and everyone before that. So a thousand people or only a thousand people are going get, to get entered into this raffle of buying, uh, of getting a uh, free Fuji X-T2 from yours truly. Nobody's sponsoring it. Nobody's giving it to me. I'm buying it with my own money and I want to give it away to you guys. And even if someone wanted to sponsor it, I wouldn't let them because I want to do it as a thank you. At that point, if you guys allowed me to sell a thousand copies of this thing, I want to do something nice for you guys as well. So, Because uh, I always appreciate all of the support that you give me and um, I wouldn't have this channel and have this community if it wasn't for all of you. The, the Finding Middle Earth YouTube channel is you. It's not me. It, it is you. It is all that is that is this right here. Um, if, if, if it wasn't you, I would just be a lonely guy sitting here talking to myself into a camera. So uh, don't think that I don't know that for one minute. Finding Middle Earth is not me. It is all of you out there. That, that is what Finding Middle Earth is. And that's why uh, I, I love taking so much feedback because what you guys want to see, that's what I want to produce. And what you guys want, that, by the way, that's why I did this whole landscape tutorial because one of the, I get like three really, really often asked questions. And the three most asked questions I get are about printing, are about landscape photography post-processing, and about which camera you should buy, full frame or APS-C. And so since so many people ask me about uh, post-processing, I decided to make this tutorial because I get so many questions about so many specific stuff with Photoshop and it's like, you know, it would be too hard to upload so many YouTube videos. So I figured I would make this whole series on it. So that way you guys have it all in one thing. And I wanted to make it affordable. So um, 
it's not released yet. It's going to be released very soon. But right now, uh, the price on this is going to be $99. I wanted to keep it right under $100, and then I'm going to release it uh, for a cheaper price for the first 30 days. And I haven't decided what that price is going to be yet. It's going to be, uh, you're going to get, you know, 20 or 30 bucks off. So for the first 30 days, you'll get a cheaper price. And then after that, it'll go to $99. And for $99, I promise you're getting a lot of stuff. You're getting hours and hours of footage. Uh, just me sitting here going through everything with you guys, showing you my personal workflow. So, and I really hope you guys love it. I'm, I've put so much time into it that I hope, uh, I hope it really gets good reviews and I hope you guys really like it. So anyway, those are my two photos, uh, just two of the PSDs. And, you know, while we're sitting here, I'll open, I'm going to open up the first lesson, uh, the PSD for the first lesson. Just, just so you guys, because it was probably dumb of me to show you lesson seven and lesson eight, because it's probably going to scare a lot of people away. But let me show you how simple the first lesson is. Uh, let me get to that real quick. Give me one second. You guys can keep leaving stuff in the chat window, by the way. While I'm doing this, I'll check it in just a second. Let's see here. All right. Because the first lesson isn't even a blend. It's just one single photo. There's no brackets. It's basically just telling you how to get the most you can out of one specific photo. All right, I'm having to copy it over from a different hard drive, so just give me just a minute here. Uh, Chuck says, sweet, yes, the, I'm assuming you're talking about the X-T2 giveaway, yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, Charles says, whose birthday is it? Uh, not sure what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> Unless I'm missing something here. Maybe I didn't see something else in the live chat. But if it is anybody's birthday in the live chat, happy birthday. All right. Ten seconds left. There we go. Okay. I'm going to open up this other file in Photoshop here so you guys can see this one. So this is lesson one. And uh, it's opening here. Come on. Now I've got three PSDs open and my computer is doing a live stream and I'm exporting 4K video footage. So I'm not going to be surprised if my computer just blows up on me. Okay, cool. I think we've got, all right. So here is uh, what's in lesson one. Okay. So this here is what we do for the very first lesson. And it is just uh, an original raw file here. Okay. And then we took it into on one and just did some basic processing on it. All right, so this is the, the photo right out of the camera. This is some basic processing inside of On1. You can do the same in Lightroom or any other raw processor. And then here we took it into the Nick collection. And see there how we just enhanced the light a little bit. And then here we added some contrast. You can see that before and after, before and after. And then right here we added some vibrance. Okay, off and on. And then here we added sharpening in a very specific and selective way with a mask. So if we click on this mask, this is what the sharpening looks like. It's just some sharpening applied to the pier or to the jetty and then some sharpening in the foreground there. All right. And then before I came into Photoshop, I did a few things and a few little uh, plugins inside of on one before I ever came into Photoshop. But basically super simple for the first lesson. And again, I explained to you guys exactly why I did what I did. So this is the, the out of the camera raw file, and that's our end result, okay? This one didn't need a lot of help. This one was just, it needed the colors to pop, it needed some texture in the clouds, and it needed a brighter foreground. But that is as nice as it's gonna get. You, you don't wanna go overboard with these photos. It's very easy to go overboard. You just wanna give them what they need to make them really shine and really sing with the colors. Because this is how it was when I was there. When I was there watching this sunrise, it was very colorful and very intense lighting over here. So I show you how to kind of bring that intense light out and really showcase and enhance the way it hits the clouds and side lights everything. So that's the first lesson. So hopefully you're a little less intimidated now because now there's not, you know, three different folders full of stuff. It's just, it's a lot easier to understand. But I, I, I just, I just based the whole series on building blocks. So it's all a building block that gets you to a really good, complicated end result 
But, but by the time you get there, it's not as complicated because you've already learned so much that it all, that like the first half of those layers you saw just makes sense to you. So you don't have to worry about, you know, I, I basically make it to where if we learn something in lesson one and lesson two, we're going to use very similar results in lesson three and four to start off with. So it's not like step one through 20, you're learning new stuff every single step. You're only learning one or two new things in every lesson. So don't think that all those big layers that you saw over there, each one is a brand new technique. A lot of it is the same stuff because this is my workflow. And then we just introduce new techniques and better ways to get things done. And then at the end, when we've learned those things, you, you can go back into like earlier lessons, like lesson two and lesson three, and you can say, oh, right. So now I guess I should probably do it this way because now there's a, you know, a better, faster way. But you'll, you'll hear me say a lot in this, there's a million different ways to do these things. I'm just showing you kind of an easy way and a hard way. Um, or sorry, I guess a, uh, an easy way to understand and a harder way to understand. But what's kind of complicated is the harder way to understand is the faster way. And the easier way to understand is the longer way. That might have been a big conundrum there, but that's, that's what you'll kind of notice is that if something's a little harder to understand, in the end, it will be easier to do if you understand how to make it happen, which you will by lesson eight. So uh, no worries there. I'm going to make sure this is all um, very, very easy to understand. I went very slow, very step by step, and I know you guys are going to love this. So all right, let's see. Uh, Chuck says, uh, kind of off topic, but are all, are all these from your D810? Uh, yes, all of those photos are from my D810. Um, lesson two is from my old Canon 1DS Mark III. So there's a fun fact for you. Um, let's see. I believe the rest of them are with Nikon D810 or D800E, something like that. And then I have that one from my old Canon 1DS Mark III, which is a, which is a fantastic landscape camera, by the way. I loved that camera. Um, Charles says, the bag behind you. Um, oh, <laughs> you saw the birthday bag. It, it was my birthday on July 15th. Um, so that's what that was one of the bags my in-laws gave me that had some, uh, some Columbia Outdoor shirts in it. I was wondering, I was like, what, what did you mean by whose birthday is it? And literally over my shoulder, there's a birthday bag. Well, I look like an idiot. Uh, Justin says, do you share the various processing tools you use or are the lessons Nick Lightroom and Photoshop specific? Um, yes. Yeah, so all of the tools that I use are inside of Lightroom, Nick, uh, Photoshop and on one, I believe that's it. So there's not, I don't go through a ton of different tools. There's basically within those softwares, there's a lot of different tools that I use. And yes, I go over every single one. So like in Nick collection, inside of that software, I use Nick collection define. I use Nick collection color effects pro and I use Nick collection sharpener pro. So that's just three things inside of Nick. Uh, and then in Lightroom, I just do basic processing. And on one, I mainly just do basic processing. But in the first lesson, I show you uh, how to use on one, the, the effects module, which is really nice. And then when I get into Photoshop, there's a lot of tools that I use in there. Uh, luminosity masks, uh, color separation, breaking up the RGB channels into specific channels to enhance color. Uh, I, I specifically take the red, blue, and green channels and separate them into curves so you can separate the color, the color tones. So a lot of stuff in Photoshop that, that I get into. Uh, but all the stuff, I promise, like it might sound hard, but when you learn it and when you see it and how it affects your photos, you're going to get like, you're going to get like that little kid feeling on Christmas morning. Like I promise you, this is, this, this kind of stuff will just kind of click and you'll be like, oh my gosh, that, that specific look or that specific thing that I've always wanted to know how to do to my photos. That's how you do it. Um, blending will never be stressful again. So, so many people that I've met in the field, uh, they'll ask me, why is your camera taking three shots right now? And I'll say, oh, I'm, I'm bracketing my photos. I'm, I'm doing a, an overexposed and an underexposed so I can blend them. And every, almost every single, not everyone, but almost every single photographer says, oh, I don't even bother with that because then I have to worry and stress about going to figure out how to get them all together and match them up in the software. And that's typically why so many people don't shoot in brackets or, or else they're afraid to shoot in brackets because they... 
they just don't know how to, to put it together in their head on how to create a workflow to get them together. They'll try HDR software. Sometimes they'll try the, the merge to HDR thing in Photoshop or Lightroom, and it just doesn't work very well. There's halos. There's severe chromatic aberration, uh, tons of other issues that arise. But using luminosity masks, you're just basically using light levels and masks to blend things together. So things like severe chromatic aberration and haloing don't happen because you're telling the luminosity mask where to affect your image in certain ways. So uh, after this tutorial, you're going to want to shoot in brackets all the time and you'll know that it is not going to be a stressful process for you at all. It's going to be very, very easy and it's just a breeze to blend them with luminosity masks specifically. Uh, let's see... Charles says, do you make your own luminosity masks or do you use a panel? Uh, good question, Charles. Yes, I make my own. So that's one thing that I think is a little bit unique about my tutorial is so many people use panels. Number one, you have to pay for the panels, uh, which is, they're, you know, they're cheap. They're not that bad. I mean, some of them are, there's like TKA Actions. There's like Raya Pro. There's a few other panels out there. I don't use any panels. I do own Raya Pro because I bought it when it first came out for a couple of other actions that it had inside of it, but I don't really like, uh, I don't like panels. I find that I much prefer creating my own and then using a levels or a curves to restrict them from there. So I create my own and I teach you how to do the same. And I think you'll agree with me at the end. Again, this is my specific opinion. It's a little easier, at least for my brain, it's easier to create my own and see them created specifically to what I want them to be instead of just clicking on a panel like Luminosity Mask 1, 2, 3. It's just, it, it's easier for me to create it based on what I know is happening to my photos. And then after I create it, if it's not right, I can shift it one way or the other from there. So very good question, Charles. Yes, I do create my own. Um, Chuck says, I only use Lightroom to organize and process uh, with On One now. Um, yes, I do the same thing. I use Lightroom to organize uh, and then On One to process my Fujifilm files. I still use Lightroom to process my Nikon files because I have noticed that uh, on one does some weird stuff to D810 files if there's foliage. It's weird. It's like an opposite thing. Like Lightroom does terrible things to foliage with Fuji files, and On One does weird things to D810 files with foliage. So it's like an opposite effect. So it's. I wish there would just be one raw processor to rule them all that I could use, and I wouldn't have to try a million other ones. I wish there was just one awesome one. Um, speaking of that, I'm getting an iPad Pro. Uh, I ordered it. It's on the way to me. So as soon as I get that, I'm going to be doing a lot of tutorials on uh, Affinity Photo, if you know what that app is. So the Affinity Photo app for iPad Pro, I'm hoping that's going to actually, I'm going to try to transition to that for all of my social media posting. And then whenever I want to do like a, a big file to print, I'll come back to Photoshop and, and do some, some stuff there. But if I'm just doing quick edits that don't require a lot of blending and just some some stuff to throw on social media. I'm going to be trying to use Affinity Photo on the iPad. Uh, let's see. Uh, what if we don't use On One or have the plugins? Um, so, good question. So, Lightroom, On One, Pictorial, Apple Photos, a lot of the free apps will do anything you need to do for the raw processing portion. And then the plugins I use are called the Nick Collection plugins. So, the Nick Collection plugins are free. So you don't have to buy them all. So already your raw processor and your NIC collection is free. And the reason I say the raw processor is free is because if you if you have something on your computer that can mess with highlights, shadows, and exposure, you're good. You don't have to have Lightroom or On One. However, if you do want to follow along with me, Lightroom has a free trial and On One has a free trial. So you don't have to buy them just to follow along. You can just put those on a trial for you, like a 30-day trial and then buy my, my tutorial, and then follow along with me. And then at the end of the tutorial, if you want to buy the raw processors, then you can buy those. But the Nick Collection plugin set that I use is absolutely free to download, so you don't even have to worry about buying that. Um, and then as far as the raw processor, like I said, you can do a free, you can do a, uh, free trial, or you can just use, there's a lot of free softwares that'll just mess with the exposure and the highlights and the shadows. I don't do a whole lot inside of the raw processors. The main meat of everything is Photoshop, which Photoshop is what you do have to pay for. However, it's also on a free trial. So you can buy a standalone version or you can pay like $9.99 a month or you can do a free trial, but you don't have to buy it just to follow along. You can do the trial. Follow along with me and then decide if you want to buy it after that. 
but the plugins I use are free. However, I had to pay a few hundred dollars for them, and then Google decided to make them free years later. Um, Chuck says, I was wondering about that program. Um, are you talking about Nick Collection? All right, guys, let me check the time real quick here. I've been broadcasting for about 40 minutes. All right, well, yeah, I think um, I think I at least gave you a, a decent idea of what the tutorial is going to look like, kind of a sneak peek of some of the Photoshop documents. So uh, just in case anyone didn't see the, uh, the beginning of this video, basically I, I showcased three of the PSD files. Um, the tutorial is releasing very soon. It's going to release um, with a discounted price. The regular price is going to be $99. Um, and then for the first 30 days or so, it's going to be a discounted price. Um, and then if you join my newsletter over on my website, um, you're going to get an even better price. So a special price for my newsletter people. Um, you said Affinity Photo. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Affinity Photo is I've heard is cool. I have not used it. So I'm going to use Affinity Photo on the iPad. I have used the desktop version, never used the iPad version. So I'm curious to see what that's going to, that's going to do for me. Um, but like I said, I haven't slept in like 28 hours. <laughs> so I'm going to try to go get some sleep now while all this footage exports so I can finish editing this tomorrow. And I'm hoping like fingers crossed, I'm hoping I can release all of this for you guys by the end of this next week. So in the next six or seven days. I'm hoping this thing will be out and good to go for all of you. And I cannot wait to hear what you think about it. So thank you guys so much for watching uh, the video. Again, if you guys have any questions, you can uh, leave them in the comments. This video will be available uh, for replay and everything. So um, Justin says, get some sleep, Eric. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna, I am going to go try to get some sleep. So anyway, you guys have a great night. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.